We're here to solve this pentominus puzzle by Mark Scoop called Roman numerals, and it has three of the four Roman numeral clues. There are no I's in the grid, but this uses X's, L's, and V's, and these X's are really easy clues in this shape to place. An X on the edge of a grid can't be part of a three long stretch, so it's part of a single cell. Points into the center of an X and then comes straight across. So all these are gimmies if you've got some experience with pentominus puzzles, and these three X's that are clued together also have that uh, definition. Upper right now looks like it's pretty constrained because it's broken up into a fairly small uh, group of cells. Uh, I've got a group of four and a group of two. Those have to stay apart, so we get a U into the grid. These four could become a U, but it's touching to a U, so instead it has to be an L. Uh, these two cells come in here, these cells here. Starting with a V is V always fits into a 3x3 three three box, so it is the case these Vs could be different, but then this V, well, like one option would be like something like this, but notice that leaves just behind four cells over here. If this doesn't come up immediately, then it would have to come up over here, but that would go too long with these two cells. If it came up here, that would uh, touch to another V. So it looks like it has to not only avoid this up, it has to join to this V, so we'll have to use this up, and that means that this is the only V that actually works for that clue in the bottommost row. Um, that's still compatible with the rest of the grid. I've now got four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cells to split up into two pentominoes. These three on the left are not the same as these two on the right, and these two can't join over here, so they join here. That puts this in the grid, and this will have an F and a Y, or a Z and a Y, and so I'm going to need to have an F or Z touching these cells. And this is a place you could actually use uniqueness to make some headway in the puzzle, but we're going to avoid thinking about uniqueness and just solve it logically. Um, one of these things that sticks in has an L clue immediately and we'll have to form this L. The other is uh, here and this is growing into these four cells, could be an F or a Y. Again, it's, it looks like it will have to become an F, but let's uh, solve that logically. Uh, we may now be able to think more about these L clues, in part because we've got to avoid this L and this L shape with a clue like this. And particularly like at the top of this grid where we have some of these groups drawing out, like where is the long stretch of this L going to be? Like there's definitely the horizontal option, but let's think about the vertical option. The only way you get four cells vertically is where these four cells, but that both isolates this cell and runs into the cell that's also part of a group. So this will have to be part of a horizontally big uh, set. And now we have to take one more cell coming up or down from that. Let's notice some limitations in doing that. Well, first, one thing is if we uh, put you know these into the grid, if you took this cell coming up from this L, you're not going to have an L touching an L. That's not going to work. And if you took, uh, it looks like this cell coming down from this L, then when you sketch out what is sort of going to be coming into the grid, we now have these cells touching this L, joining to that L. And so in general, these L's staying apart is the key constraint that we're facing. And so we get all these as being invalid. If this L came over one more cell, it now has to come up a cell and it strands this cell, so that also doesn't look good. So we're slowly seeing this L has only one option for it. It's not obvious when we we're starting to look at it, but we've now narrowed it down. It has to take this shape, which does force a U into this corner of the grid. It now means this L has to come down and then immediately go across. So this is put in. That makes uh, something we could have done uh, maybe earlier at the bottom, but we can now do for sure is the shape of this V and having it compatible with three cells in the bottom row means this is a U, leaves behind space for a T, which leaves behind space for this I. We now do get an F, which means this is the ZY over here and not the FY over here to keep these shapes separate. These two could join up to these two if they don't come together, but that puts in an L touching an L. So instead, these are separate pentominoes. So these are the same, these are the same. We don't want to put an F touching an F, so this has to be a T with a Y, and we're through this grid. So thanks, Mark, for the fun puzzle, and hopefully in watching this video you got some sense of how to look ahead with the different shapes, particularly the L shapes, which got a lot more of the juggling in the center of this puzzle, or the key ones. An L shape always has a longer stretch with one short cell off of it, and so finding the long stretch of this clue, which actually has to be the first four cells in the fourth row, that, that was a key logical step for my solve to get to the one solution here. So thanks for watching this video, and we'll see you again soon.